Welcome to Rebuild, Revive and Thrive, where we're going to dance your way through back and hip discomfort. I'm Lisa McLean, and I'm the founder of rebuildprogram.com.au. We're going to talk all things pain and inflammation. Better yet, we're going to decrease the frustration, we're going to increase the confidence, and we're going to just make getting older fun and enjoyable. So make sure that you like, follow, subscribe, and stay tuned weekly to kick the pain to the curb. Welcome back to another episode where we're going to dive deeper into a topic that actually is crucial for anybody that's had lower body pain. And that's the relationship between the glute med muscle and knee pain. You might actually think that having a sore hip or having a sore knee or having some ankle issues are separate pains or separate injuries. Well, they're not. They're deeply connected. And I'm going to go through that today. So whether you're a runner, whether you're a weekend warrior, or whether you've just found out that you've got a bit, some pains during daily activities, understanding these connections is actually vital. We'll uncover how weaknesses and imbalances in the glute med not only contribute to knee pain, but also affect the overall movement and stability. But first things first, what is this glute med that I'm talking of? Well, if you were to stand up, Pop your hands on the side of your hips, but at the top of your pelvis with your thumb backwards and your index finger forward. I hope you caught up there. That's where your glute med is. So it's right at the top of your pelvis above your hip. And it's a fan-like muscle. That's the widest part at the top of your hip. And the, the narrow part goes down to the top of the femur, so your thigh bone near the ball and socket joint. Now the ball and socket joint of your thigh bone actually attaches to the pelvis. And the glute med attaches to both of these. So it's a really important muscle stabilizing and and helping move two really important structures in your body. Now we've got three glute muscles, the glute max, glute min and glute med. But today we're just going to talk about the glute med because it is really important for hip movement or lower body movement, all lower body movements. Let's just narrow that down. When this muscle is weak or tight or overworked, it can lead to imbalances and misalignments that affect actually the whole lower limb, lower body, particularly the knees. So what's its, what's its job role? Do you know, let's, let's dive into the glute med first before we talk about the connection to the knee. So what is the glute med's job, primary job role? Well, stabilize the pelvis. And that pel- your pelvis is the center of your movement. So if your pelvis, if you move and your hips and your pelvis look like a washing machine or feel like a washing machine, we don't want that. We want the glute me to stabilize the pelvis, pelvis throughout every movement we do. On the other hand, we don't want it to be too restricted either. We do have a percentage of mobility and stability in the pelvis that the glute me helps. It plays a vital role in controlling the level of our hips, which is actually crucial for all activities, running, hopping, skipping, jumping, whatever it is you like doing, it's actually vital and it actually plays an important role. Let's just take it back to walking because walking is the basic movement and the most movement we do all day, right? So when we walk, the glute med keeps our pelvis stable and it helps our lower body move efficiently. Let's do another little exercise. If you were to stand up and lift one leg up, so you're standing on one leg essentially, and your hip slightly drops, that is the key indicator that your glute med isn't working properly. If you find it hard to balance, that's another key indicator that the glute med is not working correctly. Now, whether the glute med is overactive or underactive, it'll send off the same signals of pain or it'll send off the same signals of imbalanced. So we need to actually figure out which one you are. And if you have trouble doing that, check out, go to rebuildprogram.com.au. There's plenty of resources, or you can send me a message from there and I can help you out to get the answer. The glute med also um, helps your body abduct. So it helps your leg move away from the center of your movement. So when you lift your leg to the side, if you find that hard, or if you get a cramp in your hip, or there's some form of dysfunction doing that, glute med is not working properly. And it also helps um, internal as well as external rotation of the thigh. So movement of that ball and socket joint, well, that makes sense, right? 
because it, the muscles attach to the top of the ball and socket joint, the top, of, the top of the femur. So if you have problems with mobility, let's let's yeah, mobility with that ball and socket joint in the top in your hip, then you've got an issue with your glute med. You've probably thought, geez, Lex, I've got issues everywhere. But it's not, that's not my purpose of this podcast. My purpose is, you know, to understand more of what muscles that you need to address and connect with. So yeah, the glute med has a very important role in all movements, lower body, from pelvis all the way down to your feet. So any uneven distribution of weight and stress across the lower body means that we're compensating and the glute med now is where we start from to actually fix. These imbalances now cause knee pain. Now you've got to remember the kinetic chain, okay? We move, biomechanically is the way that we move and the kinetic chain is everything is connected, all right? So the hip joint, so the glute med is attached to the pelvis, which attaches then to the hip joint and the next joint now to be affected once the glute med has any dysfunction is the knee because it's the next joint in line. So any imbalances now means that our muscles are either overactive or underactive and now the muscles aren't supporting the knee joint. So let's now move into the bit of connection between the glute med and the knee. So like I mentioned, glute med keeps the hip in alignment and stabilizes the pelvis, which means that we it now also will keep the knee in alignment. Now it doesn't necessarily support the knee, but it keeps the knee structure in alignment where the muscles will actually support the knee and take the pressure off the structure. But you gotta think, now if we've stood up and our hips dropped a little bit or anything that I've said, and you think, oh, I don't think my glute med's working properly, Lise. Well, the muscles now are either overactive or underactive, and now you're using the knee joint and the muscles aren't protecting the knee joint. So that's not where we want to go. We want correct alignment and we want our, all our muscles to be working their job roles. So weaknesses can cause the thigh to actually internally rotate. So that's going to put a lot of restrictions through that ball and socket joint in your hip, which means your knee now will be turning inwards and when this happens, and I don't want to like freak everybody out, but when this happens, your foot now will start rolling in. So we'll lose that natural arch support in our foot just by a percentage of that, firstly, glute med dysfunction, hip internally rotating, knee now has a percentage of internal rotation and your foot starts to drop. This is all biomechanics. This is what happens um, not just to Debbie next door, but this happens to everybody that has any of this dysfunction. So the, the lack of stability forces the thigh in to rotate inwards, creating a chain reaction that puts the knee into a compromised position. And over time, this can lead to an inward collapse of the knee, which then risks, uh, puts us at risk of knee injury. Take it back to what I said. Now you're just using the knee joint. You know, the bone on bone theory is not where we want to be. Wear and tear, arthritis, osteoarthritis. We want our muscles to be supporting the structure and in correct alignment to have correct alignment to move more efficiently. That's the end goal. When that one little sucker, the glute med, gives you some grief, it's giving you some massive grief. So let's get on top of it. So now that we might have a little bit of dysfunction, we've got a little bit of rotation happening, we've got some pain brewing in the, you know, a bit of a storm up for you, we've now compensated. So our lower body now has started to compensate. So we're moving differently. Because remember that fem that sorry, the glute med attaches to the, the top of the thigh bone close to the ball and socket joint, and that provides efficient movement if we've got correct rotation. So we've now compensated. So the glute, me, um, the glute med issue will make us unconsciously adjust the way that we move. And when, okay, so let's just say, uh, like, let me give you an example. If somebody's in a moon boot and we have that little limp, trust me, I've been in a moon boot many times. I'm the queen of injuries, queen of fixing, queen of injuries, but you have that limp. You have to limp when you're in a movement because you know, you're unbalanced. 
Now when you get out of a moon boot six weeks later or however long you've been in a moon boot, that's the way your body has adjusted to walking and that now is easy to your subconscious to walk. So to retrain you to walk properly again is gonna be a little bit harder. Same thing when there's a dysfunction in this glute med, we've got compensated compensation happening, we've altered the way we move, and now that's the way that your subconscious thinks you should move. I hope that makes sense because what I teach my, my clients in my coaching program is the body is designed to move as cheaply as possible. Not most efficiently, but cheaply as possible. So this is why we need to keep retraining when we've got some form of injury or pain or imbalances in our body. So this compensation that's happening, let's take it back to the glute med. I'm getting a little bit off track here. Take it back to the glute med. When this compensation happens, you're now putting extra stress through your joints. So the hip joint, then, you know, it's reflected to the knee joint, which then of eventually is reflected to the ankle joint and we're gonna run the risk of you know biomechanically itb syndrome you know patellar inflammation um flat feet you know limping leg discrep leg length discrepancies you know there's so many factors that happen over time when we don't fix these issues all these issues that i have mentioned can be fixed we must retrain your body, correct your biomechanics, and retrain that overactive, overactive and underactive um, muscles. Remember, there are people to do this, including me. This is my job, this is what I do. I retrain muscles to improve biomechanics and get you out of pain. So I'm not just saying this to freak you out, I'm saying this because this is what needs to happen. So when, um, like I mentioned, we've got that, comp we've changed our movement patterns, we've got that compensation happen. So many things can happen and I'm not here, we don't have hours for me to, to go through all the things that can happen, but just know that when the pelvis is not stable due to the glute med, the next joint to be affected is the knee and remembering that the muscles now are either overactive or underactive and there's no support there. But addressing both strength and functionality of the glute med as well as understanding and correcting your movement patterns, so correcting your biomechanics, um, is essential into alleviating the knee pain and building up the support so that we're in correct alignment and the knee is actually supported. And obviously, I haven't said it yet, but probably should, but thinking that you know it, but obviously improving range of motion through that hip joint, that ball and socket joint. So this will improve the kinetic chain from the hips to the knees and to the feet so that everything is working harmoniously and more efficiently. And then that way we've got less risk of injury. Now, again, I've, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Okay, picture me, and I'm always in a hurry. You know, I'm that, per I'm that girl that likes to do 100 different things at a time, which you probably know by now. But I'm running down the stairs at home and I might miss that bottom step because I'm in a hurry and I have a little trip. But I have, I have built my muscles, connected my muscles up due to my, my back injury, my L5 injury, that even if I have a little trip, my muscles know exactly what to do and I don't have an injury. But for somebody that has a glute med issue, sore knee issue, a weak ankle, or anything to do with the lower limb imbalances, you are now gonna be in pain, whether you've injured your spot, injured your spine, you know, even just that little trip can herniate a disc if these things happen. Which is why I want you to remember that actually creating strength, functionality, getting the balance between mobility and stability is essential for becoming pain-free, all right? So it's not just me giving you a pill saying, hey, I'm gonna get you pain-free. It's a process, it's a journey, and there's connecting to do. What happens now when the glute med, like I said, other than knee pain, so we've got the glute med dysfunction, we know you're now looking for it, that you know, you've got that internal rotation, the knee might be turning in, the foot's starting to become flat and roll in, that's a big red flag that we need to be fixed now, we need that natural, arch support in our feet, but we'll get pain in the hip area. That's a no-brainer because of the attachment, right? Um, along with that pelvis becoming a washing machine. So we'll get pain in the hip area, we'll get discomfort while you know walking or even climbing stairs because it's that extension and flexion from the knee joint, sorry, the hip joint to the knee joint. 
So it's that movement of both joints when you climb stairs that's actually going to pinch and bring pain. And when the glute is not, the glute meat is now not stabilizing the pelvis and the hip drops, you've got a whole world of problems. No, 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 no I'm not going to say that. Not a whole world of problems. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You've got some problems, sounded massive, um, now that we need to actually address. You might have some radiating pain going down your leg. Um, it might actually be painful when you sleep. If you're asleep on that side, it's going to become painful. And we do run the risk of creating bursitis through the hip. Definitely run the risk of creating bursitis. Now, what can we do? We need to improve range of motion. We need to keep that ball and socket joint in your hip joint. Rota we need to keep it 100% um, rotation. We need to improve range of motion. I don't like saying 100% actually. We, we don't want perfect, we just want better. So we want to improve range of motion in that ball and socket joint and we want to build up strength and stability throughout that glute med. Now, obviously we need to be doing the right exercises. We need to be doing the correct form when we're doing exercises. We don't, we need to improve movement patterns first, but we do need to build up this um, glute med. Definitely, and we need to connect it to the muscles that are running down your leg to support your knee. Because when that doesn't happen, you're still gonna have knee pain and you still run the risk of having hip pain. So we wanna make sure that we're doing the correct exercises. And again, if you have no idea of what to do, I have my Rebuild app subscription that you can go and check out that has all the corrective exercises in it. Click the app takes you inside, directs you to exactly the specific exercises. I've designed me doing the video so I explain exactly what you need to do and how to do and you can do them at home. So that's not to mean that you have to go and check it out, but if you actually are guessing what you're doing, go to rebuildprogram.com.au, check out the Rebuild app that I've designed. There is no guessing anymore. It's very specific, it's very simple because we've got to keep it simple when we're doing rehabilitation. And that's exactly what, we do, what we've got to do. So you need to do the correct exercises. You need to build up that glute med and you need to correct your alignment and improve your biomechanics. And Rebuild app will, will show you all of that. So what are exercises that you can do? Obviously, I don't have the video to show you, but things like the clam, and I know you probably roll your eyes and go, oh, so boring, Lisa. Yeah, I agree. Clams are boring, but effective in isolating that glute muscle. Do you know, bridges are actually good as long as your hamstrings aren't actually going to be overactive. Do you know, there's any single leg stance balance exercise and balance exercises that actually isolate and encourage that glute me to activate but it will not activate if that pelvis is dropped so that's the key that's the red flag if you stand up and your pelvis has dropped a little bit well we need to work on the glute meat if you have no idea of what to do check out my rebuild app from my website um, and go from there if not I mean you can always google things right but is that right for you Mm, probably not. We need to be doing the right thing because on the other hand, if you go ahead and do an exercise that's not for you, you might be doing more harm than good. And I just want to give you a little example of a couple of clients of mine that have come to me and I've, we've narrowed it down to glute meat issues um, and we've built it up. And these people who came to me were, couldn't, couldn't be active. You know, even walking hurt. Um, a lady, one of my ladies came to me, she had hip issues that actually had her in tears. We knew she had a bad knee and she actually started come, uh, presenting ankle pains, ankle aches. She had gone to her physio and the physio said that they're actually not connected. That's a load of crap because they are connected. Now what we did was we actually started to build, to, <clears throat> without going into it, um, to bore you, we had to address the fascia. We had to address reconnecting those muscles, activating and isolating those muscles. But once we did, her biomechanics improved out of sight. And now that, um, and this is through my coaching program, my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, and it, you know, it's online, so you don't have to come and see me in person. Um, once we rebuilt her up, she was able to go running again. And she hadn't gone running for 10 years. So we we're able to get her running, going and 
doing strength exercises and living a best life. This is, this is the thing. You can retrain your muscles to get you out of pain. But we had to address her hip, her range of motion, isolate her glute med muscle. Then that right there, after we did a process of three steps, <clears throat> helped her knee pain. We didn't even have to do anything to her knee, but her knee pain went. This is what I mean. Stop fixing the knee pain. The knee actually, the knees actually get a whole lot of blame. It's not their fault. It's not the knee's fault, unless you've got structural damage through wear and tear and bad biomechanics. But another lady came to me just quickly with hip issue. We fixed her hip issue. She presented with knee issue, but because we were we were looking at the imbalances and addressing from knee to shoulder as well. She started having a little niggle in the knee. That was a red flag that those lower limbs were not connected. We connected them. She's out running. Do you know, that's the thing. We've retrained it. We've retrained her, um, her movements and her biomechanics. If you have got hip pain and you're starting to get a knee a niggle in the knee and then your ankle is starting to flatten out or overcompensate and roll out we need to address that glute med we need to be looking at your pelvis and we need to be helping you out with stability and function anywho i hope that has all made sense i could talk about these topics for hours but nobody's got time for that so that's a wrap on yet another episode if you've loved the info on this, don't be shy. Go ahead and like, follow, or subscribe, whatever platform you are on. Share it on your socials, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. Go ahead and tag me in it, Lisa McLean. Um, whether you're in chronic pain, whether you have a nagging injury, or whether you're an athlete who wants to improve their performance, or actually just want to be more efficient and be a better you, then this podcast is for you. And stay up to date by liking, follow, subscribe, so that you get a little notification when I do a new episode. Um, on that note, I'm going to leave you until next time, but make it your mission to be more aware and to be a better you.